Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, please. You have to hold it. There you go. All right. So, hello, hello. Uh, my name is Fardad. Okay. Um, please don't call me professor. I do not have a PhD. Um, uh, call me Fardad. Uh, don't please, please don't call me by my last name. I cannot pronounce it. Um, uh, so, how many of you have seen me as a prof before? All right. So, those who didn't, please ask who did, <laughs> what kind of a person I am. So, um, that, the, the main rule of the class right now would be like this. This we didn't have last semester. We, do it, we did have it last semester? Yeah, some of it. So, this is the talking stick that you're going to get, okay? So, it's going to be in your hand. And as I'm teaching, I'm going to ask questions. The person who has it answers the question and passes it to the next person. Okay, now your answer could be whatever you think is the right answer, or if you're just not in the mood, or you don't know the answer, you simply say, pass, and you pass it to the next person. If you hear three passes, you can come to rescue. Okay, which means if you know the answer, and that element says pass, 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 now you can say, can I answer? Okay, but let people think. This process of people thinking what the answer is does wonders. Okay? The fact that I ask a question, everybody thinks, what's the answer? That is an amazing thing. Talking stick. Hello, Mr. Wilson. How are you? We were all waiting for you. <laughs> all right. Talking stick. It's going to take me a long, long time to uh, uh, remember your names. Uh, my apologies. And Probably I would never remember because I'm very bad with names. I'm a very, very bad person. Faces, I will never forget. 50 years from now, when I'm just about to die, if I see you on my deathbed, I'll, I'll recognize you. Okay, but I will not know what your name is. You are my student, but I don't know my name. Okay, so, 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 so that's the thing. The first of all, I, uh, and I really apologize for murdering your names because, um, uh, you know, we are from all over the planet Earth and... Uh, that's what Canada is, and uh, we uh, uh, cannot pronounce each other's name. So I apologize if I mispronounce it. You keep correcting me, hopefully, and I'm going to uh, uh, try and uh, do it better next time. Uh, the subject uh, web page is here you know what it is. I'm just going to go through it very quickly. Um, course information all there. You have uh, the land acknowledgement. Please read it. Uh, we are uh, on First Nations land, okay, and we need to acknowledge it. Read it. Go through the resources, and really read it, okay. And I'm not joking. This is something extremely important for you to know. Uh, to where you are, what are you standing on? And who do we owe all this beautiful uh, place that we live in? Okay, so please go through the land acknowledgement and read it. Extremely important. Okay, follow those links and know about the first people of this country. Subject addendum. What are we going to do in the semester? That format is different now. They are using an Excel sheet, and we printed it as PDF. So uh, kind of make uh, full screen it and go through it. Uh, the information uh, that are here are uh, essentially you know, what, am I, what I'm going to do. If you see an OP244 over there, translate it to 345, because I changed a few things and I type, made typos, typos probably. So um, uh, I remove my office hours. No more office hours. Instead, booking by appointment only, which means Check my free time using scheduling assistant, and any time I'm free, that's office hour. Okay, just book an appointment with me, or two things you need to do. Um, I'm sorry if I'm boring people who already noticed from last semester, but we need to know this, so I'm going to explain it. Microsoft Teams, your friend. Please download it, install it, use the app, not the web version. I want the app, not the web version. I want to be able to actually uh, control your computer and format your hard drive if I want to. So, uh, 
let me see if it actually logged me in. Did it? There we go. Okay. You can call me at any time. Please do not. Do not ask. Can I call you? Okay, don't send me that. Just call me. But respect the, the dot. You see the dot over here? Where is the dot? This dot. You see that? If you, if you see it's busy, don't. Okay? But if, if you see it's away or it's green, then please call. No, you don't need to ask. Okay? Unless you see I'm in a meeting. It's a good idea just to click on a scheduling assistant and take a look to see if I'm busy or not. But if it's green, I'm not talking to anyone. If I'm close to the computer, I'll pick it up. If I'm not, I'm going to see the missed call and I'm going to answer. And I'm going to try to answer within 48 hours. Um, so if I see a missed call and I see three days pass, probably I'm going to send you a message saying, sorry, if I, I miss your, miss your call. If you need to talk to me, yada, yada, yada. So that's better because if I put two hours or my office, and I said this is two hours, 70% of you have class at that time. The other are working, and you can't talk, right? Out of office, when you see me out of office, that's the time that you can ask me if you can talk. Try to call to, it doesn't matter. If you see I'm in out of office mode, which means I'm at home, uh, sitting and working. Um, usually it's from uh, five o'clock in the afternoon till 12 at night, and then 12 at night till eight o'clock in the morning. Um, don't go after 10 o'clock when you're calling because my computer is going to go ding dong doing and my 10 year old is going to wake up and my wife's going to get pissed and we don't want that, right? So please, uh, careful. Uh, just the only time that you need to really uh, um, make sure that you're not calling me is when you see the red thingy over there. It means I'm in class, for example, right now. And my schedule is update, updated. I have set my schedule exactly to when I'm busy and when I'm not. So when you see free spaces, that's the time you can actually call me, okay? Any free space that you see over there, I am not right now. See, I'm teaching this one, then I'm gonna be that one, then I'm gonna be commuting on road. <laughs> so, uh, so probably these things, I'm gonna actually make it something like, uh, um, I don't know, something that you can call me, because you can call on my cell and I can, we can talk in a car, it doesn't matter. So I'll, I'll try to change the commute ones, but the rest is fine. So, uh, and scheduling assistant is here. So you, when you click on new meeting, there is scheduling assistant tab over there. You see that? You click on that, you add my name, then it's gonna show my schedule and you know which one is matched between you and I, and that's the time we can talk. That's the most important thing because I know you're gonna need lots of help when we go through everything that we need to do. Uh, yes, that's that. So, what else? Uh, the class that we have is online. So we do the class online. Um, I don't know why, but we are online. So, uh, but the good thing is that I have time actually to get home to my equipment, because at home I have everything set very nicely at COVID time. <laughs> so so I, can, I can do the online teaching very nicely. Yes, sir. I am recording now. Am I recording now? See, I love it. He's like the recording police. <laughs> He's been there all the time. Like that gentleman very much. Yes, recording. There you go. That's the evidence. All right. So the, obviously what I do at, at, when I'm actually doing the online thing is going to be recorded. I don't know if I'm going to record it with screen recording on big blue or big blue button but it's going to be recorded anyway uh, what else the phone number that you see over here calls microsoft team so that's essentially my microsoft team phone number if you call that one your my microsoft team rings um, what else i need to talk about here uh, workshops, 25%, final project, 15%, quizzes, 15%, midterm, 15 and final, 30%. Uh, I'm going to say something, and uh, uh, I don't know if I should record this, but I'll record it, the heck with it. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, the weighted average of the two must be a pass, which means 33% of quiz one and uh, 67% of 
uh, quiz, uh, of, sorry, 33% uh, of test one and 67% of test two. If that uh, weight is above 50, you're good. You're good with tests. <laughs> Test, okay? The project must be submitted. You cannot have a nothing. If you don't submit the project and you get zero in it, you're not going to get 85%. You're going to get an ink if your average is higher than 15. 50. <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> okay? So if you don't submit the project, you're going to get an ink in a subject, and you're going to, if your average is higher than 50%, if not, it's an F, okay? Um, quizzes, nothing special over there. And overall, with everything, you should have a 50%. Everybody's clear on that? Are we good? All right. Um, it says what we are about to teach, but in OP345, they have to use a hammer drill. <laughs> okay, yeah, so yeah, in uh, OP345, uh, I rather teach and make sure that most of you understand before I go to the next topic than covering everything. Covering everything is not my goal. My goal is to go one step further and understand everything and go to the next one. So we are trying to, we're going to try to have the workshops in sync with what we are doing. But if I'm behind, then you might do the workshops later. So check the web page that I have. Don't go to the, like the thing. And you use dash two to see what the due dates are. If we go to a topic and I see like 30% of you understand, 70% have no idea what we're talking about, I have to stay on the subject so we understand. OK? So thing might get delayed. It didn't happen in the last two semesters. But three semesters ago, it did. So I'm just mentioning that I follow, that I, I, I go by classes feedback. OK? That's what I do. And I see a full house almost, and I'm very happy about it. So uh, keep it that way. Uh, if you don't attend, you don't attend the class, you're doomed. OK? This is not OP244 to go study. OK? We have, you have to actually sit in a class, and you have to you have to be inquisitive, and you've got to ask questions, and my answer is going to be, I don't know, because I have to go find out, OK? It's going to happen many times. You'll see it. I'm not ashamed of saying that I don't know, but I know that I can find the answer much quicker than you, OK? So uh, that's that. So if you're hearing me, I don't know. I don't know. It's not that I don't want to answer. I really don't know. Or I'm doubtful, or I forgot, something like that. So uh, final test for you is going to be on week 13. So uh, in here, I think I updated it. Did I? Yes, yeah, so I put it on week 13, as you see. So essentially, in here it says overview of uh, te final test overview to, to come afterwards and ask questions about not to. You cannot see your answers, but you can talk about if you want on week 14. because. Uh, 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 the test has to be in the lab, and we don't have any lab after, so it has to be done then. So essentially, semester officially is over uh, at the end of week 13 and week 14. We have just one class that I'm sure that 90% of you will not attend. It's going to be me and Wilson sitting and talking. <laughs> yeah, OK. So, so I, I love that guy, seriously. Like He keeps me on my toes, and I, and I love that. So you should be all like him. I'm telling you, like, this is very important. All right. Uh, so that's that. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Read everything and see what it is. Um, and if there's any questions, let me know. So that's the addendum. And <clears throat> I have all the... Our GitHub organization is... This is, is this link correct? Yes, link, yeah, yeah, good. So GitHub organization, it's, it's going to 244, isn't it? Yes, it is. So let me fix that. Oops. Um, so how do I edit? Yeah, so let me fix it. So that's, uh, that's the organization. Come on, come on. 
copy, paste, and save. So that's the GitHub organization that you're going to go to, and everything's going to be there. Uh, OP345 uh, NBB notes is where I'm going to post everything that I do in class. Uh, and anything that is done immediately goes over there, including the recordings and all the good stuff that we do. I might move this to my own repo from here. I do not know if I'm going to leave it over here, um, but we'll see. If, if it's moved from here somewhere else, you're going to know the address. Okay? Resume. <laughs> That's one of the good things about recording the thing, actually. Pause it and censorship. Anyways. Uh, if you did not do the GitHub thingy and didn't add me as a collaborator, it means you're not going to ask for my help. I'm not going to help anyone who doesn't have a repository. Okay, and your repository must be private. I must be collaborator. If you don't, if you don't know how to create a repository on Git, quit computer science because you mean nothing. And I'm not joking. It's not a joke. If you go to any company and they tell you, okay, create a repository, what is your repository? Say, out of the door. I don't want you. And in fact, they Google your name. If your, don't, your Git doesn't come up, you're obsolete. You're a dinosaur. Okay? To collaborate, you need to be able to work on a repository. And I'm not doing, asking you to do like Git stuff. You're only doing five things. You're doing a clone. You're doing a push. You're doing a pull. You're doing a commit. You're doing an add. That's it. Nothing else. Okay? And if there is any conflict and some boo-boo happens and you cannot fix it, you let me know. I'll find a very easy way to fix it. Okay? All right? But you need to have a repository. So what happens for those who don't know is that a quick uh, explaining of what a repository is. Uh, how many people know what is Git? Um, how many people do? Actually, I'm not going to say that because people are going to get embarrassed. Okay. Uh, uh, how many people don't do it? Um, how many people know who created Git? <sighs> okay, how many people know who created Linux? Linus Torvald, right? So that's the, that's the biggest open source project in the world, Linux, right? Linux is the biggest open source project in the world. And Linus Torvald did it in his basement, right? Then he put the code on and say, everybody, come on, so let's collaborate. And people started adding and contributing to the <coughs> operating system. And it grew, and the bugs got fixed and everything. And then the, the contribution became so chaotic and massive that they could not handle it. So what would Linus Torvald do in that case? He creates Git. Okay, So Git's, Git is actually essentially created so the contribution for such a big thing becomes and we're going to use that. And then they took that Git companies, they put all these big servers, they installed Git, the, the same Git, exact same Git, identical, and what you install on your computer. They have it on their servers. The only thing they do, they manage it and put it on servers that you, they, they, they never get loose, lost. So your repository goes on the cloud, and then you clone it wherever you want. Who can tell? OK, what is the meaning of cloning? Right, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, you're basically, uh, basically making a copy on one from the cloud onto your computer, or basically a copy. Okay, yeah, pass it. Okay. So when we say copy, as you see what happened, like the gentleman asked, "What is your name, by the way?" Omar. Omar. So, um, Omar. Okay, I'll try to remember it because in my language we say Omar, but <laughs> Omar. So stress on O. Omar. Oh, Omar. Okay, okay. So there you go. So, so that's that. So. Uh, uh, as you see, the microphone is passed to the next gentleman. It's going to keep going like that. And the lady sitting over there thinks that she's not going to get the microphone, but afterwards it's going to go down. <laughs> oh, never mind. Okay. So, all right. So, um, uh, um, so for those people who came a little later, this is the talking stick. It gets passed around, and the, who, the person who has it answers the question. Here you are. Okay. And uh, if you cannot answer, if you do not want you're not in a mood you don't want to you just want to listen that day just uh, uh, say pass and get, give it to or don't even say pass give it to the next person as easy as that <sighs> what I wanted to say
yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so they created Git, and uh, 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 we use that. So they put the Git on the servers, and the servers are, uh, 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 are what, they, what we call upstream. So when you hear upstream, okay, push your code upstream. It means send it to the master repository. There is no master repository in Git. In Git, everything is a master repository. It's a distributed application, which means any Git on any computer can be the master. It means somebody from GitHub can push their code into your computer if they were anybody over there. You follow what I'm saying? So they are really identical, but because GitHub is up there with Git and it's uh, a safe place to be, we call it master repository or upstream. So essentially, the repository that I put in Workshop Zero, you are creating an upstream and add me as a collaborator. How do I help you? You have a problem with your code. You push your code into the repository. Push means smart upload, which means it uploads only what is added, nothing else. So you don't have to think of, oh, did I upload that? Did I download? You don't do that. You just push your code. You add, commit, and push. It goes up to Git, and then you call me. I'm, I'm a collaborator. I have access to your repository. I pull it, which means I get your code. I share my screen with you. I open your code on my computer. I fix your code. I push the code upstream. You pull, you have the changes. There is a feature called diff. I'll show it to you. You diff the two, and you see exactly what the code was and what it is, how I fixed it. Your responsibility is to reflect on it. Tell me what I did to fix your code. That's good enough. Got it? All right? Now, what is commit? So there are two actions that you need to do when you add something new. You add, and at the moment that the code is at any stage of, any stage of interest, you commit. That could be going to washroom. So you are coding. Oh, I have to go to washroom. You're going to say, commit, going to washroom. You go to washroom. And then you cannot come back. You come back a few days ago, a few days, few days ago, a few days later, you keep doing your stuff, and it goes back. And then <clears throat> after three days, you see you screwed up the code so badly, you can't do anything. And you said, when I went to the washroom, everything was working properly. So what do you do? You revert everything back to the commit with the label going to washroom. And the code goes back to that stage. Or you can see what the difference between that commit and now is, so what the mistakes are. Again, anything added to the repository is like Big Brother's watching. It's going to watch you have done. And every commit that you do is creating a turning point. Okay. So if you have a problem with the code, a good thing is to say, yes, like right, asking help from Vardad, commit. Goes over there. When I open up, I know exactly what we are doing. Are we good? All right. Google Git open book. There's an open source book, not an open source book, a book that is free for you. You can read it. Because it's for Git, they couldn't make it. They, they, could, they sell it. But they had to have it open because Git is open source. They cannot write a book on it. But anyways, what, <clears throat> what I'm saying is that the book is open. So if you read chapter 1, 2, and 6, you know more than me. And that's like 60 pages. Uh, not 60, even less than that. But So 1 and 2, 1 introduces Git. 2 shows you basic uh, commands that you use for Git and explains to you. And it's, again, more than my knowledge. And 6 is GitHub. So. I think, if I recall correctly, and if it's not, just, just take a look at it. Anyways. <sighs> Go to subject item on information policy and see exactly what it is. Addendum supersedes the subject policy. Okay? So if in subject policy it says only you need to pass the final uh, test to, to pass, but addendum says weighted average, addendum supersedes that one. Remember that. Whatever you have. And turn off your cell phones. <clears throat> that was mine, actually. I don't know why I turned off Bluetooth, but yeah, there you go. There we go. That's one. <clears throat> okay. So that's that. Wow. 
Faculty information, help office, we talked about it, you know exactly what it is. You click on faculty information, all my information comes up. It is a copy of what you have in the addendum because the addendum is not, is not readable. I just put it over here. So you click on my, oh, it, I don't have anything linked over here, so let's go back. So if you go to online office and help, over here it brings up your team, the team that you're a member on already. I added all my students to that team. You should be there, okay? Uh, and if you're not there, when you click on it, it's, it tells you you want to join. You say yes, and I'm going to accept your thing. So anybody can join here, anybody from school, I don't care. Friends, family, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And in here, you can help each other. So if you have a problem with a code, don't write, don't, don't copy and paste your whole assignment in there. It's just, what's wrong with this? Don't do that. That's plagiarism. What you do, you only put the piece that you don't, you have problem with, and I say this part of code, of, this part of the code is not working. Anybody knows what's going on, and three people are going before me is going to say, I had that problem, I fixed it like this. That's perfect. Do that. Okay? No problem with that. Plagiarism is allowed in my class. I mentioned in OOP244, you know what does it mean. When I say plagiarism is allowed, it's like you want to submit the workshop, it's a day before due date, and it doesn't work because of one piece. You can get that little piece from someone else, put it over there, you have to just cite it. You have to say, I got the piece from here to here from Jack or Jane, okay? And uh, you're both on a clear, uh, you just lose mark for that, so instead of 90%, instead of 100%, you get 95 and I'm going to thank Jane for helping you. Okay? That's all. That's what it is essentially in computer world. Nobody does anything from scratch. Everybody uh, gets everybody's code and they modify it to their thing and, and then they uh, give the credit to the person who wrote it initially. I want that to happen over here too. So that's that. Okay? And we have all that in the workshops so you know it. So you cite it, you're good. You don't cite it, you have done that in OP244, you know exactly what I mean. So the practice test, hopefully you have done it. Uh, <clears throat> you are in OP345, I'm much more picky when it comes to 345, which means picky in, in rules and regulations. If by now you don't know how to write a clean code with indentation, you're in trouble, okay? So when I ask you to submit the, the code that way in a test, you have to do it that way in a test. If I see a code's coming flat with no indentation, no syntax highlighting, I'm not gonna mark it, I'm not gonna bother, I'm just gonna put zero. And some of you did that in last semester in final exam and got an F because of that. Because I mentioned 50 times, don't do that. Don't, they did, yeah. Uh, and I'm not joking. Like, if I see the code that is, it's just a matter, I, I showed you in a practice test. You just click on code snippet, you do it in Notepad, you paste in it. It's not rocket science, okay? And I, I don't expect perfect indentation. I do not expect a perfect program. If the program you have written barely resembles the correct logic, you get 100% in it. That's only test. Because in tests, I don't expect perfection. I, I need demonstration of knowledge. Okay? When it comes to workshop and project, that's a different story. But with tests, that's how it is. Okay? So I, the only thing I'm asking you is to just follow the instructions properly. Okay? That's all. And we'll see in quiz number one, quiz number zero that you're going to do today, how many of you are going to actually do it and how many of you are going to get zero in it. So you're going to notice when you get zero in a quiz, imagine that that could be your final test. Careful, okay? Uh, and I will, many of you will do because I, that same thing happened in OP244 and the next one. Again, this is not a threat. It's just asking you to please follow instructions. You are now getting into computer programming. It means um, and this is, uh, and there's no joke, any of you heard like you have a cousin or you have a brother or you have a father who works for a big company, any company, I don't know, Mozilla, Fedora, uh, <laughs> uh, Google, any place they work, the day, day one they give you 3,000 page document just how to 
name your variables. Okay? So if you do not follow instructions properly, if you do not follow code submission properly, it, it doesn't matter if your code solves world hunger. They don't care about it. Okay? You have to follow instructions of the company you're in. I am your company now, so you have to do that, please. <sighs> and, all right, so that's that. Um, be active, be active. So where was I? The weekly schedule is in here, the material that we are going to work. So if you, uh, my weekly schedule, oops, why did it move? Why did I want it to move? My weekly schedule takes you to, let me see if it takes you to 345 or it's 244. It is 345. So it takes you to my schedule on 345, okay? Uh, if you click on office help over here, it takes you to the office, to, to Microsoft Teams. Um, and uh, it's not? Oh, thank you. There you go. Now it's visible. Okay. <laughs> so probably it's in all subjects like that. I have to fix that. So now it's currently it's visible now. Anyways, and w this weekly schedule is the weekly schedule that we have, and it takes you to the to the course notes. So you click on overview, it goes to overview. Okay. Oh, is that a question? You're just. <laughs> oh, I thought you're like desperately. Yeah. Yes. What's up? Oh my God! Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> You're going to have lots of concept questions because OP345 is all concept. There's nothing but concept. <coughs> it's, you already know the language is OP244 is C++. In here, you're just adding spices and pepper, but that pepper is ghost pepper. Okay? So <laughs> that's that. So yes, of course, concept. Yeah. Uh, so read these things. Uh, again, I teach around 30% or 40% of what you see in these notes. The rest, the rest, 60%, the 60 of the ones that I don't talk about, you're supposed to read and come with questions. But it's impossible for me to go through every single thing in detail, especially we lost two weeks in this semester, week one and week 14. Okay, so we have a total of 12 weeks to go through this. Okay, keep that in mind. Any questions down to this point? Did I scare you enough? Yeah, uh, you can go first. Have you put the link for the jobs? It should be in the organization. I don't do that. I, I'm not a lead in 345. Cornell is. So Cornell posts this stuff. I have no idea. But when it comes up, I'll know. I had the answer, but because you didn't have the microphone, I have to tell actually the, what the question was. The question was, I'm not going to ask for your name. The question was, is there a maximum deduction for citing if I get 10 different pieces? So 10, 10% from 10 different people, how much mark would I lose? The answer is 100%. <laughs> yeah, because uh, you, otherwise you've got to say, oh, hey, like Jennifer, give me the... Give me the workshop, and you just said, this is Jennifer's workshop. I'm citing it, but I'm submitting it to you. <laughs> but yeah, but I look at the amount that you're doing, and I'll try to be reasonable. Okay, uh, don't worry. I'm not going to. If you cite like a uh, quarter of, a, uh, of, of something, then you get 75% in it. <laughs> okay? <laughs> That's what it is. I'm not going to. Yeah, you know what I mean, right? And I'm not going to be, I don't know if I'm exactly, because you, then you cannot measure, so it may be 5% more or less, but that's how it is. But use that, it's really helpful. It actually helps you learn too. And who knows, if I ask you how that code works and you show me that you actually learned the code, I might give you the, code, the mark back. So let's put it in this way. If you see a code and you rewrite it, make it your own, then there is no citing required if you make it your own. That's why we have code reviews, which I call you and I say, okay, explain to me how you've done over here. If you can explain it to me how you've done over here, fine. If you couldn't, zero for that work, whatever it is, workshop, project, or whatever. So code reviews, uh, now it's the beginning of the semester, I have time. Last semester, I only had half. I could do half of the students. Now I have full time. So 
So you're going to get code reviews from me. And don't worry, it's not because you did something wrong. I just want everybody to have a code review. Okay? Be extremely, extremely tidy in your coding. Be a nerd when you're coding. Be, have, have obsessive compulsive disorder when you are coding. Make sure everything's clean and nice and organized. That's, that, makes, that's, that impresses people, even if your code is wrong. <laughs> I'm serious. It's like somebody writes, it's an amazing handwriting and bad dictation. You ignore the bad dictation. Says, Look at the handwriting. OK, yes, sir. Oh, if you spam, I'll kill you. OK, don't spam. Don't write a for loop and say, this is a for loop that counts from 1 to 20. Don't do that. I know that. But if you're writing a function and you, a function is complicated, you have to comment, yeah. If you put a nice comment up there, you might not even get a code review. If I look at the thing and I see, OK, the comment is nice. You're, you're explaining what's going on. So, yeah. Be the judge. Take a look at your code. If you see, oh my god, what the heck is this? Comment it. First for yourself. Because you're going to forget what it does a week from now, right? And, I'm, and I swear, that's the case. Any code you write in a week, you forget, OK? So that's that. We're going to go through all those good stuff, <sighs> OK? What else? Uh, practice test you did, quiz you're going to do in a second. So everybody's logged into the school computers. Log into school computers. Today, I don't have the baskets with me. But again, those who are my students, you know how I do it. I bring baskets, and I put it at the edge of the table. When you are doing your quizzes, all the cell phones go to the basket. Then I count the cell phone and the number of people in the row, and I match it. OK? So the baskets are coming. This is a test that I just want to know how much you know. So. If you, if you cheat, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. That's all. So uh, um, uh, just be logged into your computers and open uh, Notepad++ as we are going through so by the time comes, we don't have to spend too much time. Uh, so Notepad++ and put it on the side. <coughs> and by the way, I see all your screens in here, by the way. OK, so remember that. I have to mention that. I see all your screens. I see all your screens, and uh, where is the mouse for this thing? Oh, there you go. Yeah, I see all your screens over here, so I can exactly see what you have and what application you open. It's being recorded. so. Uh, I dare you to cheat, OK? <laughs> yeah, because seriously, I, like, I, I see all you will see. Oh, by the way, while you are doing the test and quizzes, you see I call user IDs. I say SWXYZ. When I do that, if, you, if it's familiar for you, it means I'm talk, calling you. It means you're doing something that I want to comment, make a comment. It, again, doesn't mean you're cheating. It's just <laughs> a comment, right? I want to say, like, oh, why, what are you doing? That's wrong, or something like that. So make sure you save your file in, uh, uh, s save your file in your uh, notepad++ with something.cpp. So it gives you uh, limited intelligence. It helps you so you don't make a mistake. And, and while you program, it actually comments it. It actually indents and helps you. So <clears throat> anyways, so keep that open. When the time comes, we're going we're gonna to deal with it. <clears throat> emergency online session, I'm going to rename it, and I'm going to edit it over here. So it's going to be, I'm going to call it over here lectures. Because it's not emergency anymore, it's lectures. Uh, join the lecture. Uh, is it, it's Mondays, right? So join the lecture on Mondays. You click over here. You come to LTI link. You select. You click on launch. And after you click on launch, in here I'm going to say. So that's uh, that's uh, 
I'm going to call it OOP345 lecture. And this is important, please. You don't do it now. Please don't join now. I'm just demonstrating. So join session comps. When the recordings are, uh, are posted, the recordings are going to all be listed over here. If you haven't do, done big blue button, that's what it is. You click on join session. You join. But then something comes up over there, tells you to microphone listen only. If you are listen only, I'll kick you out. Only microphone, OK? Get a headset. And if you don't, can't get a headset, I don't know where are you from. Get a headset with a microphone so you can speak back when I ask questions. That talking stick that's going to get passed around, over there is going to be a random user that I'm selecting. So you see your name pops up on a screen, and you answer. And Control M, I think, you have to go. So in here, I'm going to click on microphone. When you click on microphone, it's going to try and it's going to say allow. One, two, three. You see? OK, join audio. And now the audio is on, and it's actually getting broadcasted. If you were in here, you will know. So you, if you click on these three dots over here, it tells you that uh, keyboard shortcuts, it is Alt-M. So to mute and unmute. So immediately you mute after you log in. And anytime I ask a question, you can unmute. Even if you're full screen and you don't, can't but find the button, Alt-M unmutes you. So you can talk and you can mute back in. OK? So that's what you do. And you should hear yourself and you see the thing. It shows that actually the, so test that. Don't just say join audio. Then I ask a question and say, my microphone doesn't work. Like, Test it. Make sure it works. OK? That's that. Any Bluetooth thing works with your phone or stuff. And if you cannot uh, join audio, you can always dial the number over here and join the thing using your phone and use if your phone headset. And you can mute and unmute on that. Anyways. Or you can just simply join with your phone, too, because <laughs> that's uh, it works on a phone, too. So uh, I'm gonna just gonna end, and I can. Uh, I'm, gonna end, I'm gonna end the session and meeting. I might pu publish a link for guests to join. I don't know yet, but we'll see. So uh, end meeting. <coughs> so that's big blue button. That's our pride and joy. This is. There are lots of Seneca coders in that thing. Big Blue Button is written by, st many parts of it are written by students I hired from OP345 when I used to do applied research in here. So this, OP, this Big Blue Button uh, is a, a, use it with pride, OK? All right, so uh, that's that. All right, I think that's it. Now, questions? Any questions? Yes, sir. They're all on the lab computers. I don't do paper. Unless they force me to, but this time I'm going to fight it hard. Because I'd, 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 on paper, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, you're supposed to move forward. Really, paper, but and I have much more control on on, on computers. Um, people think that people can cheat. You can't. Okay, you will see. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. It doesn't format. Okay, thank you for that thing. So, <clears throat> if you copy and paste into, uh, I love that with for Notepad plus um, plus. Notepad plus plus is that what it's called? I love that with Notepad plus. If you copy and paste, it doesn't format it for you. You have to code, and it formats it for you. So as soon as you hit enter, it goes automatically to the thing. If you put close curly bracket, it jumps back to the thing. So while you're coding, it formats for you. But if you copy and paste code, it won't format it. So that's one of the things that I detect. So that's why I say it has to be indented. That's the reason. It's not like Visual Studio or uh, Visual Studio Code or Eclipse or 
sea lion or things like that that you can just copy and paste and poof, it formats it for you. It doesn't do that. You have to write the code and then it formats it for you. Again, I don't want perfect format. I want something that I read and I understand. Okay? <clears throat> it's the first day I babble a lot and I apologize for that. Okay, what else? Uh, Okay, are we all good? Uh, you don't have to finish the quiz, okay? So I'm gonna ask you to do the quiz and you're gonna start the quiz. You're gonna put all the cell phone, smell phone away. Uh, uh, the only thing you're gonna have, you're gonna open the quiz, see what the question is, answer the question and copy and paste the same bit. Do I need to demonstrate how to do the submission? Anybody wants to me to demonstrate how to submit the code? You want me to do it once? Okay, I'll do it once. So <clears throat> what you do is as follows. You open using my apps. Using my apps, you type over here Notepad, and it opens Notepad. You launch Notepad++. OK? And after the Notepad++ is open, you go to your quiz, test, whatever it is. You make sure that you save the file with whatever CPP. So it actually helps you with the code. Then you open up your quiz. This is practice. Oh, I have to go as a student. Give me a second. Otherwise, I can't demonstrate. What? Oh, student preview, just a second. <clears throat> yeah, so you go to the, you go to the uh, uh, test or quiz or whatever you have to do. You start the attempt. <clears throat> and when you actually, so you want to write the code. In here, I, I ask you to copy and paste and and. Uh, uh, format this, so I'm going to do that copy. I'm going to paste it over here. You see it all has spaces. I'm removing the spaces. Right? Then I'm going to start indenting. And it shows you exactly where each block ends, as you see. So it's not a difficult thing. OK? After you write your code properly, you copy it. And you come in the editor. You click on those three dots. You click on Code Snippet. An area opens that the cursor is blinking in it. You Control V or Paste in it or Command V. As you see, it becomes syntax highlighted. You submit and you're done. That's that, as easy as that. OK? So doing that, I will mark your code. And you'll see that the code is actually done properly. And you see it's organized. If you see the code's going straight, or it's, it's not properly entered and stuff like that, know that I'm not going to mark it. OK? That's that. Anyone is, everybody's OK with this? All right, so <clears throat> prepare your computers, prepare your Notepad++. Meanwhile, I'm going to log into this computer from afar. Ugh. This is for the recording, OK? So I require record and put the video on that so I can see exactly who's doing what. And every time, it actually is going to show exactly which application is used so I can actually uh, watch it later on. So nothing will be missed.
So all I do when I'm actually marking and I see something's fishy, immediately I'll go to the thing and I'll look at the user and I see what happens. So, so careful with that, please. So let me close all the garbage that we have in here. All right, <clears throat> while young 20, while young 20, why L-E-U-N, okay, why L-E-U-N-G 20? Oh, there you go, see, that's how I call you. So you hear your user ID, you, uh, you know that I want to come and tell you that you are doing something or not. You're not doing anything, just, it was just an example. All right, are we good? So I can actually see your screens over here, see, uh, yeah. <clears throat> All right, for example, I know that um, Irish is using Internet Explorer, but uh, why Tian62 is using Chrome? Okay, so everything over here is, is uh, crystal clear. I can, I, I, it tells me exactly what's there. Are we all clear on that? Okay, good. So <clears throat> the, the, the test has, the quiz has 20 minutes. Um, do your best, 20 minutes, be done. Um, let me just exit this so I can actually. No, no, is it? It's 47, 11, it ends 1130, right? No, 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 the class is not done. I want to start saying something. He wants to run away. Class is done over, no, it's not. Okay. So in quizzes, you will see quiz zero that is now visible to students. So start doing the quiz, see what I, I have no idea what the quiz was. Just... Oh, there are two questions. Okay, don't talk, don't talk, no laughing. There's nothing funny happening here. <laughs> Do it, quickly. You have 20 minutes, two, three minutes to the end of the quiz. I'll warn you that you have to copy everything that you have back into the test. If you do not copy at the end, you lose everything, be careful and you are not allowed to have any file, anything open other than the test. <clears throat> your last name is Ibrahim? Yeah. Okay, I have your screen, just wanted to see if it's you. It's a good idea to separate the two screens, left and right, other than overlapping. Yeah, it's just a, a suggestion. Seriously, you went away? <laughs> Quiz started. <clears throat>
Anyways, so, all right, so we want to talk about scopes. We start with scopes, and we want to say uh, when you actually put something somewhere, what is the scope? We talked about in 244, I kind of mentioned it over here. I'm going to just affirm it, okay? So if you were in 244 with me, probably it's going to be a little boring for you. Uh, say I have a class student, and in my class student, I have uh, an integer student number. So this student number, we call it class scope. What does it mean? It actually is accessible but all by, with, by all the stuff that uh, uh, a student has. Let's say there's a display over here, and I have a constructor, whatever. Okay, Something like this. All right? So that's the, the, the class scope that we, that we talk about. And then we have what we used to call an IPC global, which is not global. So we have something like constant int, say, uh, I want to see uh, maximum uh, student uh, number length, for example. And I'm going to set that one to, say, to, I don't know, uh, 9. Okay? So this becomes global. It, become, it has a file scope, which means it's only visible only visible in student.cpp. So in here, when I say student, and I create the display, and I create its constructor, it's only visible to these. OK? Do we understand this? Nothing else, only in student.cpp. We call that file scope. If I want a global thing to create it, let's say I want to know what is the maximum passing grade. I want to know, oh, sorry, uh, minimum passing grade. I'm going to create a constant uh, int, let's say over here, I'm going to call it minimum passing grade, and I'm going to set that to 50. I want this to be available anywhere a student is used. So I want to make this global. If I want to do that, I want to turn this to a global scope. For now, the scope of minimum pass grade is file scope. To make it global, you have to provide a prototype, prototype for it in the header file, which means you have to go to student.h, and in student.h, you have to get the definition, only the definition of the variable, and in here, you have to mention extern that. Now it makes that one global, which means any place the header file is included, that minimum pass grade is, acce is accessible. If it wasn't constant, you could have even modified it from anywhere you wanted. So this makes it global. Makes the file scope Are we okay with this? So global, file scope, two things we learned. Questions down to this point? Suggestions? Objections? Nope? Okay. So now I'm in main. In main, I create a variable, int mark, and I'm going to put over here 60, something like that. If I write something like this, the mark is what we call, it has a function scope, which means it is visible in the function. Are we okay with that? Function scope. It is within the function, okay? If I write an if statement over here for whatever reason, so I have integer i, then I write, um, I don't know, c out a prompt, and I'm going to go c and i, then I'm going to say if, if, i is, say, greater than, uh, i is uh, less than zero, I do something in here, else I do something here. Now, in here, if I say integer i is set to four, this has what we call a block scope. 
it not, not only has a block scope, but like any variable that is in an inner scope of something without a scope, it shadows the eye outside. Which means in here you cannot change the eye outside. This shadows it. It's exactly like you have uh, a member uh, variable, and then inside the method you create a variable with the same name. It shadows it. The difference is that over there you have access to the class. You can use the class name and scope resolution and access the, the outer one. In here you can't. It shadows it. But it has block scope, right? Uh, so what else? I have block scope. I have, this is function scope. So function scope, block, block scope. Uh, global, file scope, did I miss anything? Hmm, I don't think so. Anything else? Yeah, that's it. Okay, if I miss something, I'll let you later, know later on. So these are the scopes. Uh, any questions? Yes. Yes. External is in a header file. Header file is where you include everything, correct? So it's exactly like the class student introduces student to everywhere so it can be used, but the code is inside student.cpp. The extern does the exact same thing to a variable. It introduces to the variable to everywhere, tells that there is an external variable called min pass grade. Wait for it, it's going to come at link time. Compile time, link time, remember that? Okay, we'll talk about it again. Uh, we talked about it in 244. Compile time is the time that individual sources are getting c compiled. Promises are made then, but linker checks to see if all the promises you made are kept, which means when you say extern in a module, linker checks to see if your extern exists somewhere else, or if by mistake two of them are there. So if I put that uh, schmiggly dinghy in here, if I put that, dismiss all, oh, if I put that thing, if I put this one in another file, if I put this one in another file, it compiles perfectly, but when you link it, it's going to tell you it's an ambiguous access to those two because I have two of them and one extern. I don't know which one you're talking about, right? So linker takes care of all those things. We good? Oh, where you can use this? Are you, have you used C in? Have you used C out? These are variables. These are compound, these are instances of compound objects. How do you have access to them? No. No, I'm not declaring it. I, I'm, Declare definition is difficult to mention like that. Let's put it this way. I create, I'm, I'm going to take the declare and definition out, not to get confused. I create the variable in a CPP file. I introduce it in a header file to everyone. I give access to everyone in a header file. So you're the value you the yes, of course. So, what, so if you don't have the value of a variable, It's to know what is the maximum, minimum passing grade in this case. What is your name? I'm Iman. Iman. Yeah. Okay. If I say, ladies and gentlemen, Iman, did I create an Iman over here? No, if I want to talk to Iman, they have to come to you. I introduce, I don't need to provide. The same thing in a header file. It's like any prototype. You're telling me if you write a prototype for a function, you didn't have any problem with it. You created a prototype in a header file. Yeah. You put the body of the function in the CPC or CPP file, correct? You didn't have any problem with that.
No, not at all. It's not. It's creating a module, giving access. Yes, ultimately organization. You're right, but it's to give access. It's to introduce to others existence of a logic in another file. Is that correct or not? Do I need to give any body to a function in a header file? Why? You just answered it. Do I need to give value in a header file? No. Why? Because they gave the value in a CPP file. It exists in CPP file, it's introduced in a header file. It's like, it's like I told, told you, you're telling me for that, I don't know, where is the copy machine? I'm going to say, in the room beside over here. Do you see the copy machine? No. Did I provide you the copy machine? No. The linker is you going over there to see if actually there's a copy machine. Coffee, copy, whatever. Okay? That's the thing. So introduction doesn't need any... It, it not, not, not only doesn't need, should not have any implementation. You are just saying implementation or existence is provided somewhere else. I'm just letting you know it's there. So it's telling this one tells there is a variable called minimum pass grade. And it's set to 50. In here, I'm saying, hey, you that is working with a student, know that there is a variable somewhere outside of your scope called minimum pass grade. You can access it if you want. Why can't I just access the Yes, if, if you want to. Uh, below it, not above. <laughs> yes, you can. It's exactly like a prototype of what, why you're accessing a value in a header file again? No, I'm not. I'm using it here. In here, I can say, I can say C out. I include a student over here. Now I can say C out minimum pass grade. You see, it's accessible here. It's global. If I, if I want to check the, what was the other one? Student, student ID length. If I want to access that, I can't because it's not global. It has file scope. Does it make sense? Yeah. OK. So any file that includes the student.header file, we have access to minimum pass grade. That's exactly what's happening to C in and C out. C in and C out are instantiated in IO stream. Anywhere you include IO stream, you can use the object C in and C out. That's why. That's why they are like that. We good? OK. Welcome to OP344. That's the difference. Who asked if there is concept questions? <laughs> Ta-da. OK. All right. So that's that. Are we OK down to this point? What is the difference between this one and the five? Beautiful question. What is the difference between you're talking about uh, define and something like this? OK. Have you ever written some? Like this happened to me many times. You write a letter to someone, okay, and the name is Schmigli Dingi. You have no idea what is it. So you write it, and you write, uh, and you say, he said this, he said that, and you go to the end, and then your friend says, it's not a he, it's a she. That's a lady. And you go search all the he's and replace them with a she. That's the fine. The fine has nothing to do with your C program. Define is a search and replace. You are telling to compiler, before you want to compile my code, search for this series of characters, replace it with these series of characters. It has nothing to do with C language. Nothing. It's preprocessor directives. It's the language of the compiler. Anything you start with a hashtag, it's the compiler language. It's not C language. You are telling to compiler to do something before you compile. I'm going to demonstrate in a time, in a minute. No, I'm not going to. We have to go. OK, so scope is the only thing. The next time, you are responsible to remind me who asked the question. It was you about, about the hashtag thingy. OK, so you have to remind me to 
show you how preprocessor directives happen before compile time. Okay? I'm going to demonstrate it. Are we all good? Okay? Are we okay? One, two, three. Hello. <laughs> all right. Are we all okay? All right. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. Give me a second. Give me a second. No question now. I have to. Uh,